Shortly after the end of World War II, 300 American veterans decided to volunteer to sail 10 ships from the United States to Europe to help rescue 35,000 survivors of the Holocaust. Their goal was to bring the Jewish refugees to Israel, but when they attempted to approach Haifa, the British had other plans. Joining us in the studio to tell us about the remarkable journey is one of those U.S. sailors, Murray Greenfield. Thanks so much for coming in. Glad to be here. Now, you've written an incredible book about this, The Jews' Secret Fleet, but let's let's talk about first why you decided to volunteer. Oh, that's a good... Okay. Well, I'm a born American. I served in World War II in the Merchant Marine. But I grew up a very Jewish family. And I, I knew a lot about the Holocaust. And my decision to really join after I had learned about it, and sur surreptitiously, it was not an open subject to join up. Right. We, we, would, we met people who told us, uh, not people, one person who started to tell you, we needed you, we need guys like you. I was in the Merchant Marine, we need men who know how to sail ships. And he, uh, after he explained the whole story, which I didn't need, because I knew, I knew about the Holocaust, I knew a lot about it. My parents had come from Poland many years yeah. before. Well, I asked him a simple question. What do you get paid? And he said, there's no money. I joined. And not only me, well, but 300 other American Right, boys. there are a lot of you who went over there. So, so what happened? You, what happened when you first saw these hol Holocaust survivors board the ship? Because at the time, there were no images, really, of what was happening, right? We, we really didn't understand what we were doing either. We knew what we were doing. We didn't understand what was going to happen. Yeah. But we brought a vessel from the United States. The vessel built before 1918. It was built before 1900. Yeah. It was one of 10 that came from America. We arrived into, into Europe, we rebuilt the vessel to carry 1,500 people, a very small vessel. And we were then told where to go. And we sailed our vessel, we took it all the way to Italy mm -hmm. and off the coast of, of Italy in a small place, not a dock. We went on right on to the uh, beachhead and we loaded people on two different nights, surreptitiously against the wishes of the British. Yeah. And then we sailed for Palestine. And you saw these people. I mean, obviously, it must have been very shocking as a young Jewish man to, to, to see this it reality. Was, you're right. More than shocking. It was frightening. These were not young, they're old people. These were young people. They, one of a time, they didn't have families. They were singles. They were no couples. Mm -hmm. and, and they told us their history. And every minute you talk with them, you found a new world. You had to know their language. It was Yiddish. I knew Yiddish because I was brought up in the Yiddish parents. And so I could talk with them. And the whole trip, day in and day out, was every day I found another Holocaust. So, so you tried to, to bring these Jews to Israel, but were turned back from the British, and you ended up in Cyprus, we right? We stopped by the British. They unloaded us, put us on another vessel, mm -hmm. and brought us to Cyprus to put us in camps behind barbed wire. Which was crazy. And how long were you there for? Several months. But I, let me show you a picture. Of, of me behind barbed wire. Uh, by, by some kind of a fluke in life, I have a person after I, a person took a picture of me behind barbed wire. And not only me, but of a few of us. And here it is. Can you see this? This is me. This is Harold Katz. Yeah. He's still alive here. This is you, McDonald. Yeah, I'd like these, to show this to the These are all Americans. To see. These were sailors. Some of them, you see the barbed wire behind? There's yeah. Barbed wire. And they, this is what we found. And we were shocked. 1947, Jews are behind barbed wire, and I'm with them. Now, I mean, un unfortunately, we're running out of time, so we're going to have to wrap up our interview. But this is a, a very interesting and, and much longer story, which hopefully we'll be able to get you to tell at another point. We'll come but back. Show them. Want to see this picture? Yeah, here's there's this another is, picture. This is me alive. Not, I'm 91, you know. He's 91 <laughs> years old, my that's friend. That's me in Cyprus. This is Harold Katz alive. That's him in Cyprus. Well, He's well, alive these, also. All these refugees eventually made it to Israel, right? And that, oh, yes. And that, that's the most important thing here. They but built it's, the country. Uh, it's a beautiful thing that you did, obviously, volunteering, again, for no money whatsoever to help, um, you know, the, these people out. And thank you so much for joining us and telling us a little bit yes, about this Yes, I think you should mention my book again, if you don't again, mind. Again. The Jews. The secret, Jews. Secret fleet, It was everybody. a secret then. It's a secret until I wrote the book. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Nasha.